Now we must remember that it was Musa, it was Moses, it was our Coptic Egyptian brother who's a Hebrew at heart, our Ethiopian Hebrew brother Musa, who wrote the story about Yosef, Iusef, about Joseph. After the Passover, the Fasika, after Fasika had occurred during Musa's own lifetime, when Musa, or perhaps it was one of Musa's chosen scribes, the scribes in the house of life, who wrote Joseph's story, Iusuf's story, the story of the seven cow, seven sheaves of wheat. The, it's the dream story. He elaborated poetically using what we call seminar work. You understand, or the art of word art, word craft. This is what we mean when we talk about poetically, verbal hieroglyphics on the seven days of creation that culminated in the seventh day event. Now, what was this seven day event? This seventh day is simultaneously with Joseph's or Iusuf's seventh cow. Now, Moses speaks of this Passover angel or this angel, Passover angel, and we have Aaron or Haron's golden calf. And then for the Egyptians, there is the cow goddess. Who is the cow goddess? The Chit Haru. The cow goddess is Hathor, who, according to the ancient Kamite story, was sent by Rei, Rai, as the fiery goddess Sekemt, or Sekmet, to destroy the rebellious Egyptians. Now, Musa, Moses, he recorded the Ayusif, or the Joseph prediction. And Joseph had a prediction. Joseph predicted something that was to come to pass. And and the keys we have here, even in the scriptures, and we're going to touch on that. Now, Moses recorded Joseph's prediction or his interpretation, his Targum, his Tinbi or Targum of the seven cow dream as a means as a way of referencing or referring back or linking back, religio, linking back to the seven days, the seven days of the fitret, the seven days of creation, and simultaneously forward to the prediction, the ten beat, to the seventh cow or the Passover slash golden calf. Now, this destruction is the, quote, last day of creation, the very last day of creation, the end of a peculiar and a particular cycle, a particular cycle. Now, it's interesting now when we study the heavens concerning these things, that it is obvious that Joseph or Iusus was well acquainted with and well familiar with, as well as the Ethiopians or the Medeanites, the the Sabaeans or the Sabians, and the Egyptian priesthood as well. Now, the words cow and king. Now, we deal with with the word cow, and we touch on king. You know, cow and king. We have to understand something about this word cow and keen. Now, keen is the, or kind, keen is the old word that was used in King James' time for, for cow or for cattle. But there's something very interesting about cow and keen. Now, here we have the cow, or some say the apis, the apis bull. 
because we have to remember there's the there's the bull and there's there's, there's the calf. You understand the calf is the is the feminine, you know, or even the young one before the horns. All has to do with the horns. All right. So now we have the the cow. Now, if you will understand and comprehend something here and, and take notes of this and, and search it out, there is a link between Joseph, the seven, the seven cows, the seventh cow, Moses, the Passover angel, Aaron's golden calf, the Egyptians' cow goddess, Echit Haru, or Hathor, who was sent by Re, Ra, as the fiery goddess Sekhmet to destroy the rebellious Egyptians. Now, Moses recorded this. He recorded Ayusif or Yosef's prediction, his tinbi. He recorded Yosef's Turguame or his interpretation and the link that the seven cow dream, what it really means as a means of referring both back in time to the seven days of creation and forward to a future event to something that was still to come on the horizon or the horizon, had not yet come to pass. But this one symbolic logic now links it. Now what we get when we look at Joseph's interpretation of the dream, now Moses now doing the, the, master, the, the master level. Remember he was, was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians because he had gone to the root by being an initiate of his Ethiopian father-in-law, Jethro. So you're going to the Sabian roots of it. This is what it means in Acts of the Apostles when it says that he was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. It's a mistranslation when they say Egyptian. This should be Egypts of the Egypt above and the, and the root Egypt below or Tobia or Etiopia. So now what we get is the different interpretations of this one event. This symbolism now is interpreted in Joseph's time to the seventh cow, in Moses to the Passover angel. Then we have Aaron. For the people, it was the golden calf. So for the people, the people understood the outer level. And this is where Haron, he kind of um, went along with that, that the people interpreted and said, this is the gods, these are the gods. But Moses understood, when Moses came down from the mountain, he understood that it, it was, that was a step back. That was a step back for them. You understand? Because they're going back to the Egyptian interpretation. And when we look at the Egyptian interpretation, the Egyptian interpretation now interpreted that this, um, that, that Hathor, right, that Hathor or the, the, golden, the golden calf, the cow goddess, Echit Cheru, was sent by Re, the, the, the God, the sun God, the God Father, as the fiery goddess Sekhmet to destroy the rebellious Egyptians. You understand? But that most likely, you understand, even if that's what the people understood in the golden calf thing, if you look at that story about the golden calf, it's very, it's very interesting because Haron is speared. And there's an interesting reason why he is speared. You understand? Remember then the function, the priesthood function. Remember where the people just came from, from Egypt. But they were stepping back, you understand, and not forward. The interpretation is moving forward, and the interpretation was fulfilled in the events which just passed. But this is something now new. It's not to go back to the previous interpretation, but to the revelation that has been revealed and that they all have seen and should know. So this one event, we see it's a looking back to the seven days of creation and forward to the prediction to the seventh cow and the Passover, the golden calf. Now the destruction, the destruction is the last day of creation. The destruction 
is the last day of creation, the last day of that cycle. Some say the 2012. Is 2012, December 21st, 2012, is it the last day of that particular cycle? Now, the words cow and king, when it's properly interpreted in this context, it also means year. The cow and the king can refer to a year. Now, the year or the amet here would mean the orbit of the cow comet. The comet that is symbolically, uh, verbal, uh, hieroglyphically described and according to the nuance of language as the cow comet, not the 365-day year of the earth. And also, of course, the creation day would not be what we call the 24-hour day that it takes for the earth to spin once, one complete cycle. But what kind of a day is it speaking of? The day that it's speaking of would be the 50th year orbit of the comet or the Yobel, the Yovel, the Yobelu. The, the, thus we get the book of Jubilees, also written by or ascribed to Musa or ascribed to Moses. And Jubilee means that it refers to that 50 year. So now we get the 50 year orbit. This is the orbit of that cow comet. The time that it takes for it to pass around the sun and to return and to make a, another orbit, another 50 years. Or we can also look at this, and this could be seen as a new, quote, sun day a new day of the sun, such as what they tell us this, this winter, um, this winter what uh, equinox or this winter solstice is all about. They, this is what they're speaking about, a new day of the sun, a whole new alignment that hasn't aligned for, for some say 2,600 or so years, right, according to what calculations they would like to calculate it. So we have a new day, a new sun day. The sun perhaps having rose in a different place, and on December 21st, 2012, if the predictions and the charts and the time and the context of time is correct, the sun will rise in a different place. Also, knowing the day of the cow, the time span it took to make one orbit, this would allow for predictions, and this would allow for accurate predictions. Therefore, the prediction of when it would return, according to what Yosef said the, on, on, on his deathbed, that he said God would visit the prediction of when it or God would return to, quote, visit, end quote, could be known in a predictable date and a site be given. Now, Iusuf's prediction, Iusuf's warning given on his deathbed, it forewarned his brethren of the time and the place of the comet's next visit. But see, it would be Musa, Moses, who ultimately would not just understand, but he overstood, especially after his initiation and after he became well acquainted with the wisdom of the Egypts through his, his Medeanite high priest and priest father-in-law. And, 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 and because of the whole experience, that whole initiation, and to, he became a master in word and in deed. And that's a sign there in the scripture that he was now able to accurately interpret these fragments that one finds here and there in sacred scripture and to bring it all together. Let's go right here to, to chapter 13. We're in 13 to chapter 13, and this is um, 
this is what it says right here. It says, and and Moses, and Moses, bring it over here. It says, Yosefim, Egziyavi here, Saya, Goben, Yachu, Aikarim, Atintoche, Nema, Kazi, Kanan, Tagara, Tawet, Alachu, Belo, Ye, Israel, Lina, Lijo, Cham, Loacho, Neberna. Muse ye sunat in tocha karasugara wesede. It says in the English, and Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightway, straightly sworn, had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you. You understand? Or it won't remain that God won't visit you. You know, it won't it, it, it won't remain. I karam gziavia saigo banyachu I karam that interpreted God will surely this is a this is a definite, this is going to happen, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence away hence with you you shall carry my bones there's this picture here that i was actually saving for for this particular for this particular um this particular portion of our studies let's see if we can this one right here we actually rename this one um where we say that joseph jacob coffin egypt painting so both can reference when Jacob was embalmed in Egypt, but moreover, for this purpose here, Joseph, you know, what I'm saying carrying the bones of Joseph. So no, no doubt, perhaps there was a sarcophagus, or perhaps not. But we we get the idea that Joseph made a prediction. He gave the signs in the dream. You understand of the seven cows, seven days of creation. So we have that time till Passover time, the fifty year orbit of the cow comet. The different perspective of interpretation from the Egyptian perspective, it was the cow goddess uh Hathor Khit Haru. From from Aaron dealing with the people, it was the golden calf. Moses understood this as the Passover angel, the cow coming from his Sabian and Medeanite Ethiopian in-laws. Then from the Joseph's perspective, Joseph saw this in his dream as the, the, the seven cow, the seven cow prediction. So the prediction of when it would return to visit could be known, and a predictable date and a site was given. Now, Joseph's prediction and warning given on his deathbed forewarned his brethren the time and the place of the comet's next visit. Now, the comet having a 50-year orbit around the sun and then returning is interesting, seeing that that's the Jubilee connection and the fact that Moses also has another book ascribed to him according to the Ethiopic testimony, and that's the Book of Jubilee, or Metzhafe Yobelu, called Little Genesis, is very important as well. So we have Egypt at the Passover, the Passover of the Cow Comet, and Moses now became well aware and well acquainted and well able to interpret this. So Moses understood this prediction at the burning bush visit 40 years prior to the final Passover visit. The burning bush visit occurred when Musa, Moses, when he lived in Median. Musa or Moses as a member of the Medeanite clan, remember this is the same clan and relatives of the same clan and group of people that had rescued Joseph from his brothers. Though his brothers, they sold him not to kill him. You understand? 
the Medeanites actually rescued, or the Ishmaelites, the black Arabs, actually rescued Joseph from his brothers, undoubted learned from them what Joseph had learned. They, they, they must have recognized what sort of gifted, what sort of gifted youth that Joseph was during their time with him, and vice versa, Joseph might have also learned a few things as well. Moses then knew he had to try to save. He had to try his best to get this message out and try to save as many as he could from the destruction that Joseph 